so I've got the uh, basic shell of this space model and uh, so I'm going to then start putting a new shop fit out into there over time but um, I've added in just some generic furniture for the time being uh, so that I can demonstrate materials and that's really what we're going to focus on uh, ways of assigning and then uh, working with your materials uh, and uh, but along with that I'll show you some ways of uh, first putting in some of these different elements and uh, some things that might help you especially with a retail space um, so all of these uh, furniture pieces that I've added are simple components so on the architecture tab you can use the component tool to add any of those things and uh, you can choose the uh, sub menu there and choose place a component but if you click above the line on that button it'll just go to that option every time so I'm just going to click above the line there to place a new component and maybe just show you where you can find some uh, on the network drive as well so when you go to load family then you'll get the default library which has a lot in it but uh, we've got a lot more if you go to the folder on the P drive or student resources and then EDU DC interior design and then you'll see Revit library and uh, if you don't see that on the left you can see over here in this grey area I've got a shortcut that says Revit, Revit library as well um, so that would take me to this folder uh, the way it's set up uh, but if you don't have that you can simply make one by dragging that folder over to this grey area and then it'll add a shortcut um, only on the computer you're working on so if you go to another computer you can you can do that again but um, that'll definitely save you time if you set that shortcut up and so there again I can just click Revit library over here now and it takes me straight to that folder every time and you'll see then if you go to the furniture folder here there's a lot more than you have in the default library um, I'll go to the office furniture folder and you can see we have all sorts of shelves and uh, other things that might be useful in a space like this uh, and uh, also just the office folder so mostly tables and uh, here with chair set up so I'm going to go back to the top level of that Revit library and then you can see we've got these two Revit library folders which is actually made by, by one of the other teachers and uh, so the 2012 one actually has the most in it uh, so I've just opened up that Chew Revit Library 2012 and now I'm going to go to Chew Library again it's a little bit messy but once we've gone there then in uh, Furniture you then uh, have uh, where was it? sorry um, bookcase, Bookcases and Office which might have a little bit more that could be useful in retail space so the bookcases here some of them weren't too bad and the Herman Miller things are really good uh, you can't see thumbnails for all of those that are from Herman Miller I've got a couple but uh, but try them out and uh, you'll see that I've put all of those into my space so I'll show them in a second and uh, that might give you a good idea as well how you can get some more furniture because Herman Miller have uh, nearly all of their furniture in Revit format. So you can go to the Home and Miller website and download nearly anything they make. And if you don't know, they're the biggest furniture makers in the world and they have the rights to some of the best uh, furniture designs in the world. The um, Vasily chair and all the Eames chairs are all owned by Home and Miller. Uh, the Cord chairs, a lot of them. So, um, Again, I might just choose one of these. So maybe the uh, coffee table. I'm going to double click on that. And you can see that it's come up now in properties, and I can see even the thumbnail of it there. I'm just going to click to place one, and then I'll go and do that again. So I'm going to click load family. and then use that shortcut this time to go to the Revit library and then again browse to the same Chew library folder 
And I just wanted to show you what happens if I choose a different one now. So I'm going to maybe try this plywood chair. You could and you can see there that it hasn't changed in properties. So this may not happen to you. Uh, when you load a family, normally it'll come up in properties there. But all I'm showing you there is if you've loaded it previously, it won't. And that's because it's already in the list, so you need to find it in the list there. And so you can see there it is, there's my plywood chair family, and I can simply choose it from there. It's one of those little issues with Revit, but uh, once you know about it, then uh, it's easy to, to get around that. Um, otherwise, placing components should be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to click component again and this time go through the list in properties and choose from some that I've loaded before. And it's important to, uh, to know that that's the way you should normally choose your families. If you have loaded them, make sure you're going through the list here to choose them. Otherwise, you'll get that issue that I just showed you with the load family. So here we are, there's the shelf I want. It was already loaded, so if I'd gone to load family, it wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have done anything. It's there already. So I'm gonna just click to place it. I'll just show you one last little thing. Um, oh, so just if you've loaded a family previously, so I'll show you again, I'm gonna go to component. And then, so here, this CE shelving family is already loaded. So I'm going to go and choose a different family. Say I want to place the coffee table instead. So I'll put that somewhere. So now I might have forgotten that I've loaded that shelf family. And so I'll go to load family. And then I'm just going to load it again. So office furniture, bookcase and office. And it was this one here. Okay. Oh no, so it was uh, the one with CE in the name. Here we are. Oh no, that's not it. Sorry, there's a few that look the same. So I'll make sure it's got exactly the same name or it won't do the same thing. Uh, where's it gone? Yeah, they, yeah, it definitely looks like that. Um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try it. I think it's right, actually. No, that's a different one. Uh, well, okay, so Natasha Shelf Unit, I've loaded that one now. So I'll place that somewhere. Maybe we'll do some floating shelves. So put a couple of those in. Oops. And then, again, back to component, and I've gone to do something else. Place a different family. Then now, again, I've forgotten that I put this in somewhere before, so I'll go to Load Family and find it. Oops, not that folder. Uh, bookcase and Office. And so it was the Natasha number three. So I'll double click on that to load it in, but it's not coming up over here. Yeah. Just one of those annoying things because I think programmers people who make the software, they think, well, they expect you to remember, I suppose, but uh, it would be nice if it did change over there. It does reload it when you when you go to here, yeah. but it just doesn't select it from there, that's all. So it's just a little thing, but I know it can be a bit frustrating. Oh, of course, yeah, when you click component, it'll be there. Oh, you've oh the folder, of course, yep, so I'll show you if you go into um, find it with a file browser and then yeah of course you can copy it so it's um I, I just copy the whole thing there's there's a lot yeah yeah and so it's uh it's about eight gig yeah yeah it won't fit on or mo it'll fit on most memory six these days but if you've got a hard drive uh external hard drive will easily fit it so so again, with retail, it's probably going to help you a lot if you have a look at how you can use families other people have made already, uh, so you don't have to make them yourself. 
Um, and then one last thing again I'm going to show you is how to just do simple copies in case you don't know some of these other commands in the modify panel. You have the array tool there. And so I've selected the shelf. And now I'm going to click array. And I'm going to click a base point to pick up the corner. And I'm going to come across and snap to the, the next corner. So basically I've given the width of that shelf, with that's the spacing. So they're going to be spaced evenly butting up to the next one. And now it's going to ask me for the, the count or the number. So I'm going to type 8, enter, and you can see then I've got 8 identical copies. If I select any of those now, I can find the count again and just that number. Like 10, yep, that works pretty well. Um, so then I'll do that maybe with something else. So I've got a um, coffee table here and I'll click Array again. This time I'm going to choose a base point just below the table. I'm going to come, come across to the left and just click a point um, yeah, two metres, maybe a bit further actually, two and a half or so. So that's my spacing. And again I'm going to give a count. Let's try four. Enter. And so again, I can select any of those and adjust the count. So maybe I want three instead. But also, I can adjust the spacing. So again, if I select one of them, if I move that just by dragging, you can see that the middle one moves as well so that the spacing stays even. You can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to adjust that as well. I can <coughs> move it diagonally if you want to have a spacing in that direction. That can make it easier when you're setting out lots of things, especially in a space like this where you might have a lot of repeated elements. So again here one last time, maybe with those chairs, so starting with one of them, I can click again Array and uh, I'll change it this time to, instead of the second option, uh, the last option. So this time I'm going to pick a base point near that chair and then I'm going to come across and pick uh, a point for my last chair that I want just before this coffee table. And now if I give the count, let's make it say four, it'll put them in between the first and the last. So instead of giving a spacing from the first to the second, uh, sometimes it is more useful to give a spacing to the first and the last so you can fit, say, in between two different things. So here maybe four. There's too many, so I'll try three. And again, you can easily adjust the count. So looking at those things in 3D, you can see there, especially those Herman Miller furniture pieces, usually model pretty well. Uh, and so the next video I'll do, I'll go through how you can, again, work with the materials for all of those things, and then also your floors and walls and columns and all the other things you need to make.